Gypsy Rock wrapping out with some of the guys from Flaw. Now, I was wondering, what were some of your early musical influences? Like, what, what did you listen to when you were young that really made you want to make music? Well, I remember growing up and listening to, like, Boston and Journey as a kid, which I know Chris as well, listening to stuff like that. And as I getting older, and I developed into bands like that. I started listening to bands like Alice in Chains and Tool and Pink Floyd and really a whole lot of bands, really, that I listened to to develop, you know, mm -hmm. what, I, what we're doing today. But when I was a kid, I have to say, just to be honest, Motley Crue was the band yeah. that kind of made me, as a 14-year-old, <laughs> want to become what I am. But I started getting into other music and diversity and stuff like that. That's cool. But I think part of what's good about, about uh, our band and what helps us write such, you know, such a diverse album is the fact that everyone listens to different types of music in our band, from, you know, hip-hop to thrash to uh -huh. punk to industrial. Classic rock as well. You know, and then, uh, yeah, because you guys have a lot of different sounds going on. Like, you've got some heavy riffs, and then you get to more melodic stuff. So diversity is the key. And some spacey kind of guitar sounds. You play with like a seven-string guitar, right? Yes. Both of you guys do. Both of us do. Does that help? How does that add to the sound of Flaw? Um, I think it, it sort of it just allows you to expand. Uh, you can sort of take music a little bit lower and a little bit higher. Using six, you're looking at either dropping your really low yeah. roots or your really high roots. Going with seven. In a lot of ways, I guess it doesn't change it a huge amount. You can find other ways to work around, but I think it makes it more convenient. It sort of helps you to expand your writing potential. Cool. Deeper chunks. Yeah. All right. Well, right now we've got one from Abandoned Pools. Here's Humanist from Humanistic. It's the Remedy. We've got Flaw in the studio with us, and we're talking about their latest release, Through the Eyes, which was released back in October. Now, I was checking out your cover art. It's pretty cool. What's with the kid with the zippered mouth? Uh, we basically just felt that it described the music and the lyrics perfectly. I mean, uh, uh, the kid doesn't look much like he's in pain, uh, but his mouth is zippered shut, so it, it gives the impression that there's a lot he wants to say but can't. And I feel that, you know, uh, just from my experiences with, with, with friends of mine and with my childhood, uh, a lot of times, you know, children are suppressed into being afraid to not say what they really feel or express what they need to and, and, and uh, it leads to all kinds of things, um, you know, uh, all kinds of negative things. So I, th I think it just really grasped the album, uh, the feeling of the music and the lyrics perfectly. Cool. I thought it might have been like more about censorship versus like your First Amendment rights, but no, it's more about like being a kid. Well, the cool thing about it is that it's, uh, you know, anyone can interpret it their own yeah, way, right. but it doesn't show pain in a sense. It just shows some sort of confusion or wanting to break out. Which it's almost like he has something to say, and then you film the album, and then you listen to what he's got to say. Right. Gotcha. All right, cool. Well, we've got one from Bionic Jive up next. You guys have that CD, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we picked up a sampler uh, on the road touring that uh, actually had that song on it, and, uh, and uh, we dug it. It's, it's uh, definitely good. Hopefully, they'll be up and coming. Yeah, right on. Well, we're going to check out a video from them now. From Armageddon through your speaker, here's I Shot Lucifer. <laughs> What's up? You're watching MTV2 Rock. This is Flaw, and you're about to see their video for Payback. Now, you guys shot that. How was it working with Gregory Dark? Him and his brother were like big porn producers from back in the day, right? They were like some of the innovators. Yeah, they were. Now they're directing videos. Yeah, Gregory's actually a great guy. Uh, he was very easy to get along with. He didn't put too much pressure on us. Um, he wanted to bring out the best in us and not really tell us, you know, we, I, I want to see you move like this. I want to see you, you know, he just kind of let us feel comfortable, and, uh, and it was great working with them. Uh, we got to actually hands-on uh, pick the cast, uh, the no. different girls that were in the video. Um, are they friends of yours? No. Now they are. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we didn't, want, you know, we didn't want the typical Hollywood, you know, uh, collagen lips, uh, collagen stuff. Uh, we didn't want somebody that looked like, you know, that it, we wanted someone to look like they could live right next door. Yeah. And so she was perfect for that. Uh, especially since it was supposed to be like a nightmares type scene, yeah. she's getting out of bed, and, and uh, we just had a great time. I, I, I will tell you this though, that uh, up until recording this video, I had no idea how much work was put into those oh, because yeah. long uh, hours. Oh yeah, <laughs> but it was a dream come true as well. You know, so. Yeah, it came out really cool. What's with the worms? Is there like any kind of symbolism behind that? I think that's Gregory's idea, mill worms. Really? Huh? Yeah, just kind of throwing people off, you know. I mean, yeah. everyone. 
Oh, anything can happen. Nightmares. Nightmares. I happened to catch that when I was eating my lunch the other day. It's not really something you want to eat your lunch to. Uh -huh. <laughs> no offense. It's <laughs> no. not too bad. You know, in no. some cultures, that's delicacy. Oh, not in my culture. <laughs> anyway, here it is. Check it out. It's payback. <laughs>